Okay, welcome back everybody. We're here at VMworld 2013, and uh, this is VMworld 2013 live in San Francisco. This is theCUBE, this is SiliconAngle.com's flagship program, where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, the co-founder of Wikibon.org. Hi everybody, Ido Kadim is here. He is the director of data center technologies at Intel Corporation. We're going to be talking about the data center, the software-defined data center, private cloud, virtualization security. Ido, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, it's good to be here. So, I always, you know, big companies never really know what the titles mean, so why don't you tell us sort of what your role is at, uh, <laughs> at Intel. Yeah, I, uh, uh, my team develops uh, solutions with the ecosystem to expose Intel technologies uh, in ways that they uh, deliver value for, uh, for IT. Specifically, uh, for my team, it's in the areas of virtualization and security. Okay, so, so talk a bit more about what that means. I mean, you, you got a robust, set of technologies yes. inside of Intel. So maybe you could be a little bit more specific on how you unlock, what are you unlocking the power of? Yeah, so let me give you, let me give you an example. And you know, um, with all the conversation of abstraction, people forget that, uh, that our applications and their virtualization platforms uh, run, run on, on physical infrastructure. And uh, that controlling and know, knowing stuff about that physical infrastructure is extremely important. So uh, one example that I will give you is one of uh, the initiative that we call Trusted Compute Pools, uh, which is based on uh, uh, Intel TXT technology, trusted execution technology. And basically, uh, the problem we want to solve is the lack of visibility that people have into uh, uh, their infrastructure in the cloud, which is uh, um, uh, uh, creating barriers for people to take sensitive workloads and, and putting them in the cloud because they lack visibility and control into how their infrastructure is configured and how things actually run. So with uh, uh, Intel TXT, you can uh, get a, a measurement and knowledge that the platform and uh, including hardware, firmware, and the hypervisor are actually a known good, what you intended to run there, and you can use that, that as a foundation of trust. And by uh, using an attestation server, you can prop, uh, promulgate this knowledge into uh, management tools. And instead of managing an unknown cloud entity, you can manage a trusted server, even though it's a virtual, logical uh, uh, entity, but it's tied to known uh, stuff about the, the infrastructure. Well, that's huge, especially in the, in the context of, of security. I mean, it's an area that I know you, you're focused on, because a lot of practitioners you talk to say, well, once I virtualize it, I don't know what's happening. What, you know, with physical, I know what port's connected to what you know, device, and yep. when I virtualize it, I don't, I don't know <laughs> anymore. Yeah, so and who, who owns it, and where is it, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge it's a that we problem. want to solve. But in, and actually, we associate with that, kind of what I described also, the knowledge of where the server is in terms of geography, which is extremely important for many uh, regulated workloads. Uh, uh, in-country regulations and stuff like that. So you're doing that at the lowest level. I mean, you're doing that at the, the, the processor level. And a lot of people feel like that's where the, the problem has to be solved. So, so where, where are you in terms of being able to promulgate that, that approach, that philosophy? Is, I know you've been working on it for a while, but maybe take yeah. us through sort of the roadmap and, and where we are in terms of expectations. So in terms of the availability of, uh, you know, I'll take you through the stack so you'll get a sense of, right. of uh, kind of that pipe that goes from the IT administrator to, to the hardware, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll start from the hardware and I'll say basically every server that ships today is enabled with the foundational technology. Uh, at, and, and VMware as of vSphere 5.1, so last year's release, also supports uh, the capability so through the VMware stack, and, and in fact today, not just through the VMware stack, uh, we can uh, create that uh, trusted foundation on essentially any server that ships today. And then uh, beyond that, uh, uh, trust, uh, uh, there are several software vendors with uh, attestation servers that are shipping. Some examples are uh, HITRUST, uh, McAfee, Trapezoid uh, has, a, has an interesting solution in that space. And I, I, I hope I'm not forgetting anyone, but they'll, they'll forgive me if I yeah. do. And then um, uh, with that, that exposes an API that now can be consumed by essentially any uh, management uh, tool. So you know, RSA has demonstrated uh, 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 support of this capability. Again, I'll remind, you know, I'll mention McAfee. Um, and you know, basically. Anybody. 
Anybody? <laughs> so the, uh, one of the debates we had early on this morning, debates or, or not debates, statements by Pat Gelsinger on me, I couldn't really debate Pat, because um, Pat was <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> taken tough. back by the word hybrid. But uh, we had the OpenStack guys on earlier, so I want you to define to me uh, uh, the definition of hybrid cloud versus private cloud, because it's a semantic conversation right now, I just want to get your perspective of how do you define private cloud infrastructure and yeah. hybrid cloud, because yeah. VMware is promoting hybrid cloud, obviously, you know, software-defined data center, and hybrid cloud. So how do you define uh, hybrid cloud and private cloud? Well, um, one, I, I admit it's, it's a confusing topic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think private is about ownership of the data and the virtual infrastructure. Uh, no multi-tenancy. Uh, correct. So that would be kind of like a maybe a variable. Okay, multi-tenancy is hybrid. R right, now many many people actually associate uh, private with also being on-premises. So an infrastructure that's physically owned by, by the tenant. Um, uh, hybrid is when you combine that with a uh, hosted infrastructure. It could be multi-tenant or single tenant in, in my mind, uh, but once it's okay. hosted it becomes uh, Third party hosted. Uh, yes, I think that's, that, that to me is the definition of hybrid. That's fair. Of course, the challenging part is when it's a, it's a multi-tenant third party. So the other thing that we talked about, Pat, and, and this is something that Dave and I have been talking about on theCUBE is, um, when cloud started to hit the scene, you know, go back a decade ago, or you know, five years, seven years ago, uh, oh, it's like a utility, you plug in, you get your electricity, and you know, we have an electrical grid that flows as standard, and Pat was like, it's standardized, there's really no issue, and it's, you know, it's an oversimplification of the complexity of, of an enterprise. Uh, you talk about virtualization technology, okay, check. Security, data, I don't get bad electricity coming through my house. I don't have hackers coming through electrical grid. So, I mean, these are issues. Mm -hmm. and, and there's data, too, yeah. as well. So, you're in that area. How do you view the security issue? And, and if, you, if, if that's a flawed analogy, what's a better analogy for the cloud? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that in 1920, people didn't expect to get uh, electricity flowing all the time. <laughs> uh, and, and uh, of course, technology moves much, much faster now, and the evolution is much faster. Uh, so, I don't think we're quite in 1920. So those, so those outlets would be like APIs, right? So, or connectors, or? Oh, right, so, so I think in terms of maturity, uh, how should I say, you can make it work today. Uh, I think there are uh, probably two main fields of challenge. One is uh, technology. I think this whole software-defined uh, infrastructure is really the necessary element but how to use it is still, uh, you know, uh, people need to learn how to do it and trust it. Yeah. Which brings me to the human factor, which I think is the other big, big uh, challenge. Uh, learning to trust this automated infrastructure and, and moving away from manual provisioning to automated provisioning, trusting your policies, understanding that it actually provides a more secure infrastructure. And also, um, y y you know, uh, utility is something that to a large extent, you do get charged based on use. Well, at least sort of. I don't think IT has figured out how to do that yet. It's and, early. Uh, it's so it's, early. And it's early. It's yeah. early. I mean, one of the things we would, you know, we, you know, we do the Cube, which is live broadcast, and not a lot of people do like things like the Cube. And someone said to me last night, "Why are you? The Cube is so popular." And I go, "Well, because people are tech fans now." And so. You know, just like the automotive industry had auto fans, people love cars, right? <laughs> you know, they love cars, they love souped up cars. Yep. Back in the days when cars were cars, now you got hybrids, and you know, the engine is virtualization, and the people come to the VM world really care about the engine. They care about like the, 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 the new horsepower, the new stuff, and yeah. dashboards could be the big data, the application's the driver, if you want to kind of go there, but um, there are many kinds of cars, and they are shipping today, so OpenStack, for example, can do that. So. Um, if that's an analogy, where can we get better in this software-defined data center? If the engine is virtualization and software is going to be a key enabler, how do you view all that? Is it just incremental improvement? Is there still? Well, um, one, you know, I, I'm thinking about the, the, the analogy and I'm having a little bit of a hard time with it. Okay. Okay, to me, uh, virtualization is the wheel it's in the... It's a bad analogy, just say it. No, no, I'll, really but, well actually, I, 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 you know, I, I want to map it to my, to my <laughs> reference ahead, system, yeah. right? <laughs> Not <laughs> so, all of your analogies are home yeah. run job, but you got a lot of good ones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, I learned something from Pat as well. You know, I have my view. Um, so, uh, I, I think the, the engine is infrastructure. It's servers, and it's switches, and it's storage. And uh, virtualization is the wheels and the gear. 
and um, the you know it's it's I, I, and I am going to, to take this one step further. I think um, you know, software-defined infrastructure will be at the end game uh, when, when you can think of it as the self-driving car, right? Yeah, automation and orchestration is a big thing right now. R right, so you know, the driver will pro pro program where they want to go, but then they'll sit back and relax and the car will take them there. I think that's, that's a perfect uh, analogy for the end game for, IT. Uh, for, for IT on top of virtualization. You know, uh, software-defined networking uh, is not new as a concept, but it's new as something that is deployable. And uh, the adoption curve is going to take time. Uh, there's a ton of legacy in IT. And I think one of the big challenges that IT has is also there's all the legacy. There are the business units that go around IT into a pure public cloud, which creates a ton of risk uh, for enterprises in terms of uh, data leaks in terms of compliance, you know, what do you do with stuff that went to uh, Amazon but not under control, right? How do you make sure that that is done safely? So I think IT is going to have to harness all of these technologies to become a really effective um, mediator yeah. uh, for, the, for the actual users which will use the cloud like we use cell phones in the IT environment. Yeah, it's a great conversation and there's all kinds of analogies. And when we talked to Pat Gelsinger, you know, when he joined EMC, Dave and I had him on there, and you know, we talked about the processor, Intel processor had a lot of proprietary software in there, but it was a chip and it was a, it was a hardened uh, uh, product. And that went into a PC, which was open. So, so everyone's trying to find the hardened top in cloud. Is there a hardened, is there a, okay, forget what's in there, it just works. And, th and, and that's a debate we're kind of just starting to have and hear from customers yeah. is that, hey, I want function. I want. Y you know, I think, I think there's an evolution um, it, and, and it's, it's, it's gradual. Uh, it, it, it doesn't go, you know, if you don't uh, change address to the moon overnight, you know it's uh, you know many years since uh, since Neil Armstrong walked, walked the first step. We're still not living on the moon, so uh, um, I, I think you know first step is converged systems, right? Uh, awesome. And then and then uh, systems that can be configured in 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 software. They're not just converged, but they're really software defined, and the configurations are software defined. You know, you have to go. You have I to go. Do. To yeah, I do. I do. Oh my gosh. The, I'm giving you the hard stop. You asked thank us you. to get you out of here. I noon, appreciate so it, Dave. There you go. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, for thank you very much. Cube, appreciate it. Great. great conversation. Thank you very much. This is happening very fast thank here you. in the in the <laughs> cloud. A lot of things happening. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Yes. Oh no. You, you